Hello friends, welcome to my channel Clinical Biochemistry by Dr. Pichu Prabhakar. Today I am going to talk about another analytical question that is how diabetes mellitus leads to cataract. If you will see diabetes mellitus, uh, this is a metabolic endocrine disorder which ultimately leads to many different disorders and many organs are going to be affected. One of the organs which is going to be affected are there are eyes and that is called as retinopathy and the disease which is going to cause that is called as cataract. So we'll see how this cataract is going to happen. So first, let's see what is diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a metabolic endocrine disorder which is characterized by hyperglycemia. Means in case of diabetes mellitus, glucose level rises more than the normal value. The main cause of this diabetes mellitus is either your body does not have sufficient amount of insulin or you are not having efficient insulin, means insulin is not properly working. So in that case, we are going to have diabetes mellitus. All the body organs are going to be affected. I have already told you in diabetes mellitus, roughly our, our every organ is going to be affected and ultimately it is going to cause secondary complications. And secondary complications affects every organ almost because every organ requires glucose. Whenever we are going to see diabetes mellitus, there are two major class of diabetes mellitus that is type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is when your pancreatic beta cells are going to be damaged. So in that case, body does not produce a sufficient amount of insulin. So here we are having insufficiency of insulin and in that case we require external insulin. Type 2 diabetes mellitus which is caused because of the insulin resistance that is the major cause of type 2 diabetes mellitus. And in this case we, our body produces sufficient amount of insulin only thing is we are unable to use those insulin so we don't require insulin from the outside so it is insulin independent so this is there this is the normal conditions when pancreatic pancreas or pancreatic beta cells are going to produce insulin insulin ultimately going to open the glucose channel onto the certain specific cells like adipocytes then uh, hepatocytes and uh, cardiac tissue so there insulin because of this insulin glucose channel opens and glucose enters into our cells so glucose will be utilized in case of type 2 type 1 diabetes mellitus pancreas are unable to produce insufficient amount of insulin so we are having insulin deficiency so in that case if you, we don't have insulin so insulin will not bind to the receptor and glucose channel will not op open so glucose will not enter into the cells similarly in type 2 diabetes mellitus we are having sufficient amount of insulin but those insulin does not able to bind to the receptor so recept insulin is there but it is not able to bind to the receptor so cells not responding to the insulin so this is the major cause now we'll see how it is going to cause cataract so the pathway which is mainly responsible for this cataract is uh, called as sorbitol pathway or polyol pathway first let's see how glucose is going to be metabolized so whenever glucose via any of our body, any cells of our body takes glucose and this glucose is normally enters into the cells and going to be metabolized through glycolysis then TCA cycle, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. So this is the normal pathway of glycolysis. In this case when the glucose entry in the cells will be too much so all the glucose flux will not go through glycolysis only there will be diversion in the pathway and one of the major diversion in the pathway is called as sorbitol pathway in that case glucose is going to be converted to sorbitol by a enzyme that is called as aldose reductase here it requires this process this aldose reductase needs an adph sorbitol is going to be converted to fructose and by sorbitol dehydrogenase and there it requires nadh in the case of retinal cells, we are having sufficient or too high amount of aldose reductase but in that ratio we don't have sorbitol dehydrogenase. Means in case of retinal cells, we convert glucose to sorbitol and in that ratio sorbitol is not able to convert it to fructose. So there is an accumulation of sorbitol. So this is the detailed pathway of sorbitol pathway where glucose or any aldehyde is because of this aldose reductase converted to alcohol and glucose is converted to sorbitol and sorbitol is going to be converted to fructose by sorbitol dehydrogenase this aldose reductase requires NADPH 
two process two things you need to see here first this glucose is converted to sorbitol and sorbitol we are not sufficiently converts into fructose so there is a accumulation of sorbitol in our body this sorbitol is hygroscopic so it accumulates its absorb moisture water content from the surrounding tissue surrounding cells and ultimately the cells which will have sorbitol they are going to be swelled up when cell will swell up cell may burst or cells normal physiology normal functions will be affected so cells will be non functional that is one reason uh, and because aldose reductase is mainly present in our eye cells so those retinal cells are non functional cells because of this sorbitol accumulations and hygroscopic nature second thing is this aldose reductase if you are going to convert too much glucose into sorbitol so that much you nadph we are going to use it here and this nadph is one of the important cofactor in our body because we don't have too much of biochemical process which gives us nadph we are having limited process limited biochemical pathway which generates nadph like hmp sunt so whenever we are going to use nadph we have to use very efficiently because this nadph is going to be used for as a antioxidant process like here you are going to say glutathione in the case of glutathione if you are going to use nadph here too much so body will have deficiency of nadph and in that case antioxidant store stock will be deficient in our body so in that case free radical also going to damage our body damage our cells or biomolecular biochemical components so the here we can say the excess glucose when we are having sufficient amount of glucose then it will go to the polyol pathway or sorbitol pathway otherwise normally it will move through glycolytic pathway aldose reductase is the main enzyme main culprit here it is going to increase altering the intracellular tonicity because i have told you sorbitol accumulates water and when too much amount of water will be there so it is going to affect the tonicity and cell will be turgid turgid pressure will increase and cell will be non functional decrease nadph and increasing nadh ratio exposing cells for oxidative stress because more free radical can be active because antioxidant system you are going to decrease when you are going to decrease antioxidant system then also we are going to generate more advanced glycated end product precursor and that also going to affect many proteins in our cells so ultimately because of all these things retinal cells going to be damaged and ultimately leads to cataract and this is called as retinopathy there are for retinopathy or the damage of retinal cells we are having another thing blood capillary is going to be affected that we will talk in another pathway where p protein kinase c pathway is going to involve but through sorbitol pathway also retinal cells are going to be damaged and cataract is going to happen so this is all about how diabetes is going to leads to cataract and retinopathy so thank you very much uh, hope you like the video if you like the video press it like press the like button if you not subscribe my channel please subscribe it you can write comments in the comment box uh, your comments if you require any com specific things you can write that one also thank you